The word of our Lord that we consider together today is today's reading from 1 John chapter 1 and the opening portion of chapter 2. Did you look outside last Monday afternoon during the solar eclipse? It was noticeably less bright in our part of the state of Wisconsin as 85% of the sun was covered by the moon. And it was a good reminder of how much we depend on the light and the warmth of the sun. Without it, life as we know it simply could not exist. There is another light that we cannot live without. We hear of it in today's reading where we hear God is light. Our God who in the beginning said, let there be light, is the one who sent his Son to be the light of the world. And Jesus shined that light as he taught and perfectly lived by God's word. He shined that light in his miracles over sickness and even over death. And then for a time that light was extinguished as he died in the darkness of the cross and his body was sealed into a dark grave. But his light reappeared, like the sun returning after an eclipse as he rose from death on Easter morning. And Jesus' disciple John, who saw him die and saw him alive again, one who even touched him to make sure that it really was him, he writes to us, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. And this is the light that we need. Because our world is a dark place. We see that darkness and the destruction of war and violence. We feel that darkness flows in on us when sickness or disease comes for those in our families. It can seem to smother us like a heavy blanket when death comes to a loved one. And we know that death is waiting, just waiting to one day claim us too. Nearly everywhere we look, we see this darkness. But we realize the darkness is not just out there and around us, it is inside of us too. We are part of it. In fact, God's word says you were once darkness. Think of thoughts that you have had or actions that you have done that you don't want anyone else to know about. Isn't that evidence of the darkness that resides right inside of us? We need light. And into our darkness in which we are lost and perishing, God comes to our rescue. The Son of God tells us, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In the light of Jesus' sinless life and his innocent death, he uncovers our darkness and then dispels it as in sadness we turn from the dark things that we have thought and said and done. And Jesus removes that dark guilt from us. He points us to his cross where he suffered and died in the darkness and he says, I left your sin there. I paid for it all. And what does that do to our darkness? Listen to the promise of God's word. You were once darkness, but now, but now you are light in the Lord. In the light of Jesus who rose from the dead, you no longer walk in the darkness. You have the light of life, the light of peace with God, the light of forgiveness of sins. And in this light, you are able to see why you are here on earth, 
in the light of the word of Jesus, you can see how he wants you to live now. Living in this light of our Savior is not something that comes easily or naturally to us. Our own sinfulness seeks to deceive us and Satan works to mislead us. So John knows that he needs to tell us this. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. We cannot simply say, I believe in Jesus, and then go on carelessly living in our sins. If, for example, I simply will not faithfully use my time to pray or to hear and learn God's word, or if I will not be generous with my time and money to serve others and to share the gospel with them. If I have no interest in responding kindly even when others are rude, well then, I'm walking in the darkness. And my claim to be a child of God is is only an empty lie. The truth is not something that we just learn in church and in confirmation class. The truth is God's power at work to wash away our sins so that we no longer walk in the darkness but walk in the light of our risen Savior. And so John urges us, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sins. We know that we cannot purify ourselves even from one sin. The blood of the Son of God, who became truly human so that he could bleed and die, his blood purifies us. Not only from some or from most of our sins, but from all sin. God sees you now, purified, washed in the blood of his Son with not even a hint or trace of sin remaining on you anymore. This good news frees us from our guilt to walk in the light of our risen Savior. But we know that despite our best intentions to live out the truth, we often find ourselves again in the darkness of our sin. Now does that mean that we are walking in the darkness and our claim to be children of God is is just a lie? doesn't mean that. But it does mean that we need to be careful. Because any sin takes us toward and into the darkness. And so if we are thinking thoughts that we shouldn't think, or watching something that we should not watch, or allowing anger to linger in our minds, and if we just keep on doing those things, even though we know we shouldn't, but we just don't want to stop, If we keep on doing those things, then we are walking in the darkness. But if we sense the darkness of sin and realize the danger and turn in repentance from those things, our Savior welcomes us and restores us. In humble faith, we believe these words of encouragement and warning from the disciple John If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And this is why we begin each service here as we did today by confessing our sins. This is why Jesus taught us to pray repeatedly in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses. Our Savior answers that prayer. He is faithful to his promise to be merciful. He is just and will forgive us because he endured God's justice for our sins in our place. And notice the deep and personal concern that Jesus' disciple John has for each believer and for each of us too. He writes, 
My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. John is writing his words so that we will say no to sin. As we grow in faith and walk in the light of our risen Savior. And this is something that as God's children we want to do because we have been purified of all sin and unrighteousness. But on this side of heaven, we will not always do what we want to do in love for our Savior. Even though we do not want to sin, we still will. And we are blessed to know this. John writes, if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. When we sin, we know that we are unworthy to be called children of God. How does Jesus view us when we sin and confess to him our many and repeated failures? Does he scold and chide and nag and tell us we must do better or else? What did Jesus say to his fearful and doubting disciples on that Easter night when he first appeared to them? No nagging, but peace be with you. He is the one who is here called our advocate the one who is speaking up for us, the one who defends us in the court of heaven as he is pointing to evidence in favor of us being pardoned and forgiven. He says, Heavenly Father, I made the atoning sacrifice for their sins, so forgive them. Forgive them again. Forgive them completely. And you stand forgiven before God, because at your side stands your advocate, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One, the one who stands so close to you that he covers you with his own righteousness. And God sees you righteous because he sees you in Christ. He sees your sins no more. Even that sin you keep on remembering, Jesus says, God the Father does not remember it, because there is unconditional pardon in Jesus Christ, who is the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. These are words of God to treasure in your memory. Would you say them together with me? But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. These are real and powerful words of the risen Lord Jesus. Words by which he comes to you. Words by which he forgives you and comforts you and strengthens you. Words by which he frees you from sin so that you may walk in his light. This is also good news to share. Because for whom did Jesus die and rise again? Not only for some. He is the atoning sacrifice for the whole world. And this means that you can tell anybody and everybody that you would ever see or meet, you can tell them, Jesus paid for your sins. God declares you forgiven because Jesus died and rose from death. This good news is for you, guaranteed. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. And then pray for Jesus to open their minds so that they too may understand the scriptures and walk in his light. Into the darkness of this world, our God has shined his light. 
light of forgiveness, light of peace, that assures you that everything is right between you and your God, because Jesus died and rose from death, and he tells you it is true. This is the light that you and I and each person needs. Live in and share the light of the risen Savior. Amen.